How's it going everybody? It's Aparicio. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe for weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials, color page, diffusion page, whatever. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about such an underrated tool in DaVinci Resolve. Everyone seems to stay away from it. I don't know why and of course what we are talking about is the color warper. It looks scary but it's not. The reason I think you should be using the color warper is because it's efficient. It'll save you time. It'll save you energy. And I think you feel cooler using it. That's what I'm going to be showing you today. How to use it and why you need to be using it. Let's jump right in to the color warper. Okay, so here we are. Here's our shot. Similar shot to what I used last week. I love the uh, these shots. Very colorful, very good for the color warper. So this is the color warper, it's right here. And you're gonna ask, why do I need to use the color warper? And because it's very efficient. Now, you can affect the, the hue and the saturation and the luminance. You have a certain point of an image. Uh, unlike um, in the curves, uh, where you have to go through all these um, hue versus hue, hue versus sat, hue versus luminance. With the color warper, it's all very simple and it's there. So here's your color warper, right? So of course you hover your mouse over your image and you can see a crosshair on the color warper kind of showing where that part of the image is on the color warper. So let's select the leaf. And now to affect the saturation of an image, you would drag up. And you see it's bringing a lot of the image with it. As you can see on the warper, the web is following it. Okay, if you want to be more efficient, you come right here and I can click 16 and now we've cut it even thinner, right? And now I can affect it more comfortably. So saturation and then if you go clockwise or counterclockwise, this affects the hue of what you've selected. So before on the curves, that had to be done with two actions. It's not that quick. So let's say I want to bring the saturation of this piece of spinach up. And I also want to add a little bit of blue in it. And let's say I also want to turn the luminance down because so you can come down here and bring that down. And now it's a lot more controlled, right? And then obviously it's really saturated. So I can start to bring it down. And there we go, it now looks, feels a little bit more real. Let's go off and on. And you see what we've done to that piece of spinach. And to reset the whole thing, go here. Oh, let's expand this. So we just did three actions with one point. And before, you were probably doing it in the curve section, going to three different tabs. And you just can't find a lot of hue and uh, saturation combinations as quick as you can find them in the color warper. And keep in mind that the color warper is very soft and organic, so it leads to the breaking of your image less than, let's say, the, uh, the hue versus hue or the hue versus saturation curves, which is sick. So you can see we can be really efficient with 24 and 16 here. So obviously you go too much, you can kind of break the image. All right, so let's click here and go back to 12. Let's say you just want her skin to, to stand out. You can do that by grabbing points here. And remember, dragging inwards takes away saturation. And you drag in all the blue and the green. And just click, keep dragging. And you just drag until See what we've created, it's kind of crazy looking. Um, and then we go off and on with what we just did. And you can see we've kind of desaturated all the, the colorful things in the image and just left her face the way it is. And that was a really quick and efficient way to do that. No qualifier needed, boom, done. All right, so let's switch back to 12. A really useful tool is the pin tool. So click pin and you can pin certain points on your color warper so they're not affected. Or let's say I pin a group of these, 
that I can go back to my selecting tool and I can move this freely without anything being pulled around it, which is good for super efficient um, manipulation of a certain hue. And let's go ahead and right here to auto lock, let's turn that on. And now it automatically locks points one point away from the point you selected on uh, each side. And then you can go to four points and it'll do four points. It'll do four points away on each side from the point you selected. So instead of going and going through each section of the curves, um, you know, you want to manipulate her hair in a meaningful way. Maybe you think it stands out too much. Then you just can come right into the color warper, bring this down. Maybe you want a little bit more violet in it. Bring it up, bring this down a little bit as well. Okay, drag it towards the violet. And then you go to luminance and you drag that down as well. So now we go off on and we easily just manipulated her hair. No qualifier, no anything. We can manipulate so many aspects of a certain color without going to so many different pages in the curves or in the primaries. It makes things very easy. I think you should be utilizing this more. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and found that useful. I suggest you go and play around with the color warper. You select a point, affect the saturation, affect the hue, and then manipulate the luminance. And you're doing so many things in a couple moves in a few seconds, it needs to be used more. Later this week, I will be releasing a color space transform video. You're going to want to see that if you have trouble with color space transform. If you found that video helpful, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right.